and pisses me off so much that it's not that I cannot, I, can, I, I can't just not talk about this. This is, this is crucial. And that is the hearing, um, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, that Bernie Sanders ran in the Senate, uh, it, it was a, one of the Senate committees, where they brought in the founder of, of Starbucks, uh, you know, J Howard Schultz, um, and, uh, and he got, he got lamblasted by Bernie Sanders uh, for, um, you know, for being a union, for breaking up unions. And, I, you know, I'm going to give credit to Rand Paul twice in the show today. Uh, I have many differences with Rand Paul, and, and I thought uh, that, uh, that he was pathetic, is, is the right term, uh, during uh, Trump's presidency uh, in, in selling out basically his principles in order to be friendly with Trump and in order to go golfing with Trump and in order to be nice to Trump. I thought he sold out his principles. But as usual, Republicans step up, and I don't think uh, Rand Paul has any different ste uh, stepped up as a, as a opposition, as, a, as an opposition figure. Um, and I'm going to compliment him twice today on the show. But anyway, yesterday in the proceedings, in this uh, uh, Senate hearing, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rand Paul led off his comments with a quote from Ayn Rand, uh, a quote from Ayn Rand about how unappreciated, how much ingratitude we have towards the entrepreneurs, towards the businessmen, towards the builders and creators, um, and, and, and how we, 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 you know, we, we're more likely to burn them at stake than to just say a simple thank you. And that's exactly what you saw in the Senate hearing. I mean, the disgusting nature of it. Here's a man, Howard Schultz, that I disagree with on many things. He's not politically, uh, you know, anywhere close to where we are. He, he, is, a, he is a leftist by any measure uh, politically. And yet, here's a man who's changed the world. And, and you might think he's changed the world. Yeah, who cares, coffee? It's changed the world. He's made the world a better place for millions and millions and millions and millions of people. He's elevated... The, 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 the drinking of coffee, and, and you might be a coffee snob and think yeah, Starbucks coffee is not good enough. It doesn't matter. The fact is that hundreds of millions of people around the world go to Starbucks, enjoy Starbucks. You know, I don't think, other than a few Italians, I mean Italians generally, and a few people, a few coffee snobs in the United States, who the hell knew what a cappuccino was, a latte, latte was, never mind a macuccino with soy milk and da 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 all this other garbage, all this other stuff. Who, who knew this stuff before Starbucks? Starbucks has changed the culture. He's changed the world. He's made the world a, a better place for all of us. And, and one of the beauties is, you know, it's hard to tell, how, uh, you know, when you go to different countries around the world, one of the, one of the comforting things uh, about the world out there is that you go and, oh, there's a Starbucks. There's civilization here. <laughs> and, and yes, even in... Bolivia, and, and oh, I didn't tell you my impressions of Bolivia, but, but Santa Cruz, is, this is a poor place. This is a poor country. This is, this, you know, even as compared to Colombia, the differences are vast in terms of, and you can see it. You can see it in the cars people drive. You can see it in the homes they live in. You can see it in the business section. It, this is a poor country, but there's a Starbucks here. And there's a Star, there's Starbucks is all over Medellin, and there's Starbucks is all over Europe, including Eastern Europe, and there's... Starbucks all over Asia and countries that never even knew what coffee was. There are Starbucks there now, and, and people people's lives are just at the, at the margin better off. They, they they enjoy a cup of coffee now, and, and and it's a beautiful thing. And this man, Howard Schultz, built this. It's his vision. It's it's his it's his management ability. It's his organizational skill. It's his vision. It's his. It's just a a, a magnificent, beautiful thing. And indeed. One of the consequences of Starbucks is a, 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 a huge boom in coffee shops, in small independent coffee shops. Indeed, what Starbucks has done is created, as great entrepreneurs do, they teach people what they really want. They teach people what they should desire. And the consequence of uh, the, ex the explosion of popularity of Starbucks is an explosion of popularity of other coffee shops. In, in places where there's Starbucks, there are lots of other coffee shops. In places that don't have Starbucks, there are no independent coffee shops. And here was a, one of the great businessmen of the last 50 years, easily, who changed an industry, 
changed the world, had profound impact on our habits and, 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 and how we consume drink at least. And what does he get? He gets a bunch of parasitic, do nothing, well, not do nothing, destructive, destructive parasites, senators, complaining about it, lamb blasting it. So good for Rand Paul for standing up, standing up for that. I mean, the real story is, is, is it's a story I would always come back to. And that is the story of why the hell should businessmen have to testify in front of Congress? Shouldn't Congress testify in front of us? Shouldn't they be on the witness stand? And Schultz couldn't defend himself, but nobody can. None of these businessmen could defend themselves. Did, did, the, did the tech executives defend themselves when they went to Congress? The last person who defended himself well in front of Congress was, um, oh God, uh, the, crazy, uh, the crazy guy who built the largest airplane in the world, um, somebody, somebody on the chat will remind me his name, Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes was the last man to, to testify well in front of Congress, and that was in, uh, right after World War II. And he lamb-blasted them and, 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 and ridiculed them and, and showed them how small they were. Here he was changing the world and, and how little puny these, these, these politicians are. And just the audacity of these people to not recognize, you know, somebody who is better than them. I'm talking about businessmen, right? Yes, Alex Epstein has done a fantastic job in front of Congress testifying. But I, I, Alex is not an entrepreneur businessman. I'm saying the last entrepreneur businessman, CEO. To, I mean, I, I, Alex is an entrepreneur in a particular field, but I'm talking about big time CEOs brought in front of business, brought in front of Congress to, 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 to be ridiculed and accused sorry, uh, about the, the business activities. And the last one to actually stand up against them was Howard Hughes. That's how pathetic and bad things are. So good, good, you know, horrible. Uh, I mean, we know how evil and horrible uh, Bernie Sanders is, but good for Rand Paul for standing up for him. Boo to all the other senators who participate in the charade and participate in this, uh, in this immoral evil. And I'm waiting, still waiting for the day when an entrepreneur stands up and says something like, I do not recognize your right to question me. I do not recognize your right to question my business decisions. Who the hell do you think you are? And just walks out of there. Waiting for that day. Maybe Maybe once before I die, one of these young people that I have introduced to or have been introduced to objectivism over the last 20, 30 years and rise up to a, to a level where they are invited in front of Congress as a business person and they do that. That would be pretty, pretty damn amazing. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.